Soundstripe. Can't accept the loss, I'm hard headed. There's a little bit of madness to my method. Many falling off that fine line that I'm treading. I risk anything to be great, and I'm not letting nobody rob me of my victory. Number one, that's what I'm meant to be. When by any means, only thing that makes sense to me, I can make nice or make history. I got that dog in me, yeah. Turn me up. Big energy, got the crowd going up. I got that dog in me, yeah. I don't need the one no one I got that dog in me, yeah I'm talking all bite, no bark I could rip your squad up I got that dog in me, huh. So what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah So what's up? I told him move over Enough of that mediocre I been The man's is cruising around in the stroller I got ice in my veins like a cup of Minnesota Why not? I'll show you how I'm built What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Robbie G Show podcast on this Wednesday. Yes, that's right. I'm releasing this on a Wednesday this year or uh, this week because honestly, I got a lot coming up the next couple of days. Um, it's my daughter's birthday coming up this weekend. Uh, she's going to be 13, so we got a couple parties for her going on this weekend and things to do. So today is a Wednesday, and I'm recording a day earlier than normal. But uh, I wanted to send a big happy birthday shout out to some celebrities celebrating their birthday today on December 6th. Uh, and that is a boogie with the hoodie, uh, a rapper, he's 28. Uh, NBA superstar Giannis Anacatumbo is 29. Man, his name is crazy. You ever look at his jersey? His jersey, that name goes like wrapped around like a friggin' uh, rainbow on there. It's crazy. Uh, some more birthdays today from some more celebrities. A lot of TikTokers celebrating birthdays today. I don't really mention a lot of TikTokers because that's crazy that they're on there. Uh, Stormy Henley, uh, model, she's 33. Uh, Johnny Menzel, the NFL quarterback or former NFL quarterback, is 31. Uh, let's see. Princess Sophia, the Duchess, is 39. Uh, let's see, politician Andrew Como is 66, uh, Judd Apatow, film producer, is 56, Sarah Rafferty, actress, uh, is 51, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and Ryan White, the activist, uh, kid who had HIV and AIDS and died from it way back in the 90s, uh, he would have celebrated a birthday today as well. Uh, so happy birthday to everybody out there celebrating a birthday today or this weekend, especially a big happy birthday shout out to my daughter Brooklyn, who is going to be 13 on Saturday. Uh, so happy birthday to everybody out there that's got a birthday in the next five days. Uh, so today we got a bunch of topics to talk about with sports and a few with celebrity news and celebrity stuff. Um, the Bachelor, the Golden Bachelor is over. Uh, the first ever Golden Bachelor is done. And who did Gary pick? Well, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But let's go into some sports stuff first. We always start with sports here. Uh, NFL Week 14 picks. That's right. The NFL is almost over. They only got what? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Five more weeks left of football uh, before the playoffs start. It's crazy. Also, I'm going to let everybody know uh, the final NCAA rankings for football. And then, of course, who made the playoffs and what bowls. So we're going to talk about that. So let's get it all started uh, with the NFL 14 pick. So week 13, I end up having a pretty bad week. Uh, not too happy with it. 7-6 and six was my week this week. Uh, but I am 115 and 77 since week one uh, for a percentage of 66.96%. Uh, so not great, but not horrible either. I'm pretty 
you know, pretty decent. So I'm happy with that. So let's go into my picks. Thursday night football tomorrow night. It's the New England Patriots and the Steelers. I picked the Patriots in this because I don't believe they're going to lose the rest of their games. I think they'll win one or two more, and I think they beat the Steelers. I think they're going to play spoiler to the Steelers and win that game. I'm also hoping that they lose or they win a game uh, because I want Carolina to have that cushion in case they get another win where we could still have that number one draft pick. I did see a mock draft today where they actually said that um, New England was going to have the first pick and that the Chicago Bears via Carolina would have the second pick and that New England would go for Caleb Williams, which I was happy with, and the Bears would go with Marvin Harrison Jr. So I was happy on all accounts with that one. Um, I really think that the number one pick is going to pick Caleb Williams, so I don't want that to be the Chicago Bears. I don't think he would fit here in Chicago. I think he's already a prima donna, and I'm not excited for him. In fact, I really hope that he decides to stay in college for one more year. Um, but he has till January 15th to decide on if he's going to make himself eligible for the NFL draft, so we'll see. Uh, and That's the Thursday night game. Sunday, the noon games. The Bucks and the Falcons. I got the Falcons in that one. Lions and the Chicago Bears. I got the Bears rebounding back over the Lions and getting their fifth win of the season. Um, I do believe the Bears are going to have six or seven wins this year still with five games left. So I do see the Bears winning over the Lions. I think that Justin Fields is going to do what he couldn't do because of the defense in the last game against the Lions, and that was to shut them completely down, and he's going to score enough points for them to win. I think he's got a ve- he's got a he's in vengeance with them. He wants that win. He he just lost that last game. They should have had it. The defense screwed it up, and I think Justin Fields is going to have that win. Uh, so Bears over the Lions. They'll split the series with them. Uh, Colts and Bengals. I got the Bengals in that one. Uh, Jaguars and Browns. I think the Browns are going to beat the Jags. I think that with uh, Trevor Lawrence hurt, they're not going to do as well the rest of the season. So I do think the Browns get that win. Saints and Panthers. <laughs> I got the Saints in that one. I don't think the Panthers are going to win many more this year, if any, out of the last five games. Uh, Texans and Jets. I got the Texans in that one. Um, and then the final noon game is the Rams and the Ravens. I got the Ravens in that one. Uh, the Sunday 3 o'clock games, the Vikings and the Raiders. I got the Raiders over the Vikings. It's in Vegas. Um, the Seahawks and 49ers. I got the 49ers winning. Bills and Chiefs. I think that the Chiefs bounce back and they beat the Bills. Um, but I still think that, in fact, in my fantasy league, I'm starting Justin Fields over Mahomes. Mahomes just has not been the guy this year for me, and he's really struggling. And I want this last win, so I think Fields is going to go off in that game. Uh, so I'm taking him over Mahomes. Uh, so the Chiefs are going to win that game. It'll be ugly, but they'll win it. And then finally, the Broncos and the Chargers. I got the Broncos because they're just pretty much rolling most of the season now. So I see them winning. Uh, Sunday Night Football, the Eagles and them boys, the Cowboys. It's going to be the Eagles in that one. Uh, Eagles are not losing to the Cowboys, even though it's in Dallas. And then Monday Night Football, there's two games a week now. It's crazy to think about, but two games a week. We got the Titans and Dolphins. I got the Finns winning that one. And then the Packers and Giants. Normally, I'd say the Giants or whoever was playing the Packers, but I don't think the Giants stand a chance, so I think the Packers win that one. And that's fine. I'm good with that. So let's see how I do. Hopefully better than 7-6 and six that I did last week. Uh, so that's going to be a big one. Let's see what we do. Hopefully we do really well in that. Um, but I will take the Giants beating the Packers and being wrong there. Uh, so that's done. Uh, now, uh, Zach Levine, should he be traded? Chicago Bulls are actually on a win streak right now. And it's because Zach Levine is not starting. I do believe that Zach Levine should be traded. I'm not a fan of his lately, especially this season. Um, yeah, I definitely feel that he should be gone. And I think that we should offer DeMar DeRozan... A deal to keep him in Chicago. Um, I think DeMar is the guy that's going to hopefully take us and build around him, even though he is a little older. And I know people are going to say, well, DeMar is a little older. Yeah, that's great. You need veterans. I, I hate that people who say you got to build everything through the draft. No, you need to build through the draft and you need to build through free agency. That's two ways that you got to build. Um, so, yes, I would trade Zach Levine. Looking at his stats this year, 
he just hasn't been great. You know, he's missed a couple games now in a row. Um, he missed the last two. But, I mean, if you look at his stats, I mean, really, like, his points in the game that he only played 25 minutes and got hurt. He was one for nine for two points. Um, he had a zero he didn't play against Oklahoma City. 13 points. <laughs> 13 points against Miami in back-to-back -back games. Um, 19 against Orlando. Like, he has just really struggled this year. And I just don't feel he's the guy. Um, this year with the with the Bulls, he's only averaging 21 points. Last year, he was at 24. The year before that, he was at 24. The year before that, he was at 27. So, I mean, he's had some good seasons with the Bulls. But, I mean, 21, he's diminishing. And I would get rid of him now. I would not keep him. The Chicago Bulls are on a two-game win streak right now. Let's look at what they've done. Hold on. Let me look at their standings really quick. So as of right now, the Bulls sit in the Eastern Conference at the 13th spot. They're 7-14. and They're 3-7 and in their last 10, and two of those wins were with Zach Levine out. I would say that I think the Bulls play better on offense and defense without him. So that's what I would do. <clears throat> I would trade him. I would find somebody. I heard Detroit is a possibility. Um, so, I, yeah, I would look for somebody to take him. That's what I would do. Uh, so, yeah, let's see what the Bulls do with that. <clears throat> I don't think Zach Levine's going to be a Bull by the end of the season. I think he will be traded. All right, on to the next topic, WWE. Before I go into my NCAA stuff, um, WWE, what's next for CM Punk and Randy Orton? Craziness, uh, Randy Orton officially signed with the SmackDown brand on uh, SmackDown last week. He signed the SmackDown contract, which means he will be going after the bloodline and Roman Reigns. Uh, Paul Heyman tried to have him jumped. He was jumped by uh, Jimmy Uso and um, Solo. He ended up beating them up. And then he told Paul Heyman, call Roman Reigns and tell him daddy's back. So that is definitely what we're going to see with Randy Orton. I'm excited to see where that goes with the bloodline. <clears throat> I can see a um, matchup coming at probably the Royal Rumble for the title with Roman Reigns and Randy Orton. But the big thing is, where is CM Punk going to go? I really thought he was going to stay on the Raw brand. And now I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he's going to stay with Raw. I think this is just a teaser because this weekend on SmackDown on Friday is a tribute to the troops. <clears throat> so, of course, they're going to try to get their biggest stars there for the troops and everything. Um, it's not overseas like they used to do. It's actually going to be in Rhode Island, which I believe there's a base out there. And if not, what they do is they just bring in veterans from all over to come and sit at the event and be there for the tribute to them. Uh, they do it every year. And CM Punk is a big star. So obviously, you're going to want him there. Um, so that's why they're doing it. And then Monday on Raw, Adam Pearce said that he was going to uh, offer Punk a contract on Raw. So I have a feeling that CM Punk will sign with Raw when it's all said and done. Friday night, of course, they're going to offer him a contract for SmackDown. He's going to go to Raw, see what they say, and then he'll end up signing with Raw. What's up next for CM Punk, I believe, will be um, Seth Rollins. I think you're going to see him taking on Seth Rollins, which makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, the two of them are going to have an amazing, amazing um, thing with each other. We all know that. They're going to have an amazing program. The matches are going to be good. The promos are going to be fire. I can't wait for it. And I think everybody else is excited about that too. Uh, so, yeah, I see CM Punk and Seth Rollins either at the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania. Um, if they don't build it for Royal Rumble, I think they'll build one for WrestleMania. I think CM Punk either wins Elimination Chamber or he'll win the Royal Rumble. Um, so far... Cody Rhodes is in the Royal Rumble match. I would like to see a back-to-back -back Royal Rumble win for Cody Rhodes and have him finish the story with Roman and beat him, um, but we'll see what happens with that. But we'll see. I'm excited. I think that everybody's excited to see where Punk is going to go, and I hope he stays healthy, and I hope he stays um, 
and toes the line with WWE enough where he can finish out his career there and retire and probably go in the Hall of Fame. So that's going to be amazing. Uh, let's go on to NCAA. So we got the rankings. And then where are the teams going to go in the bowl? Let's all find out. Uh, so here we go. Number one in the rankings, my school, the school that I love, Michigan, at number one. They ended up going 13-0. and uh, Previous week they were number two. Uh, number two is Washington. Uh, they are 13 and 0. They finished two. Uh, number three is Texas at 12 and 1. Number four was uh, Florida State at 13 and 0. <laughs> number five, Alabama, roll tide, 12 and 1. Georgia, number six at 12 and 1. Ohio State was 11 and 1, and they end up finishing number seven. Uh, Oregon at number eight at 11 and 2. Missouri ten and two at number nine. Penn State ten and two at number ten. Ole Miss uh, number eleven at ten and two. Um, Oklahoma the Sooners are ten and two at number twelve. LSU at number thirteen at nine and three. Arizona finishes nine and three um, with uh, number fourteen spot. Notre Dame is number fifteen at nine and three. Louisville ten and three at number sixteen. SMU is 17 and 11 and 2. Number 18 is Liberty. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty at 13 and 0. It's amazing. They can be 13 and 0 and all the way at number 18. Uh, North Carolina State finishes at 19 with 9 and 3. Oh, uh, Iowa at 10 and 3 at number 20. Oregon State is number 21 at 8 and 4. Uh, Oklahoma State at 9 and 4 at number 22. Tulane is number 23 at 11 and 2. James Madison was number 24 at 11 and 1. And Tennessee, who was not ranked the previous week at 8 and 4, is at number 25. So those are the top 25 in the college rankings. Um, everything is ready and set for the bowl games, and I'll have that in just a second. So if anybody was shocked as I was when it came to the playoffs for the NCAA, not shocked that Michigan got number one, okay? Not a shocker at all. Number one ranked in the nation uh, will play. So here's the four teams before I tell you who's going to play in what uh, playoff, okay? But the number the four teams ended up being number one, Michigan, number two, Washington, number three, Texas, and number four, Alabama. Now, Honestly, besides Alabama fans, <laughs> okay, besides Alabama fans, who really believes, and email me, please, the email is going to be down in the bio of the show, email me if you believe that Alabama honestly should have been in. And this is not for the diehard Alabama fans, because of course you're going to say yes, okay, and we all know this. But do you really believe that that team should be ranked and in the number four spot? I mean, come on. Just because they beat Georgia, they got the number four spot. What about FSU? What about Florida State University? Why didn't they get in? They were ranked number four. I think the NCAA should rank it where numbers one through four make it. That should be how it is. Just like in every sport, the top eight teams make it, the top whatever. That's how they do it. And that's how it should be in college football, too. I think it's favoritism. They love Alabama. They love the Roll Tide. They love the two people with the two teeth. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's it's ridiculous. But whatever. Michigan's going to roll over the roll tide. It's going to be great. I can't wait to see it. But here's all the bowls um, starting Saturday, December 16th. Yeah, we uh, next Saturday. Not this weekend. Coming up, but for the following weekend, we kick off the bowl season. Uh, so the Myrtle Beach Bowl will be Georgia Southern and Ohio. It's going to be on... At 11 a.m. on ESPN next Saturday. Uh, Celebration Bowl, Florida A&M versus Howard. That'll be in Atlanta, Georgia. The New Orleans Bowl, Jacksonville State versus Louisiana. Uh, the Cure Bowl, Miami, Ohio versus Appalachian State. Uh, the New Mexico Bowl, Fresno State versus New Mexico State. Uh, the LA Bowl, the UCLA is going to take on Boise State. Uh, Independence Bowl. Is going to be that day, and that's Texas Tech uh, versus Cal. And that's all the games for then. Monday, December 18th is the Bahamas Bowl, temporarily renamed the famous Toastery Bowl. Uh, Western Kentucky versus Old Dominion. 
Uh, let's see. Fres uh, Frisco Bowl is Marshall versus UTSA. And that's Tuesday, December 19th. Thursday, December 21st, we got the Boca Raton Bowl, USF versus Syracuse. Uh, that's going to be a nighttime game at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Uh, Friday, December 22nd, we got the Gasparilla Bowl. It's Georgia Tech versus UCF. Uh, that's in Tampa. Uh, Saturday, December 23rd, a big docket with the Birmingham Bowl kicking it off at noon. Troy versus Duke. Uh, the Carmiela Bowl is Arkansas State versus Northern Illinois. The Armed Forces Bowl is Air Force versus James Madison. Uh, famous Idaho Potato Bowl, Georgia State versus Utah State. Uh, the 68 Venturas Bowl, Eastern Michigan versus South Alabama. Uh, Las Vegas Bowl, Northwestern versus Utah. That's, of course, out in Vegas. That's going to be a big one. And the Hawaii Bowl is San Jose State versus Coastal Carolina. Uh, Tuesday, December 26th, we got the Quick Lane Bowl. That's Bowling Green versus Minnesota. That's in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, the First Responder Bowl, Texas State versus Rice. Uh, the Guaranteed Raid Bowl is Kansas versus UNLV. Uh, Wednesday, December 27th, we got the Military Bowl. It's Tulane versus Georgia Tech. And that's in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, Duke's Mayo Bowl in North Carolina versus West Virginia. The Holiday Bowl, Louisville versus Southern Cal. Uh, the Texas Bowl, number 20, Oklahoma State versus Texas A&M. And then Thursday, December 28th, we got the Fenway Bowl. That's SMU versus Boston College. Uh, Pinstripe Bowl is Rutgers versus Miami. Uh, we've got the Pop uh, Pop Tarts Bowl, <laughs> number eighteen North Carolina State versus number twenty five Kansas State. Uh, that's in Orlando, Florida. The Alamo Bowl uh, is Oklahoma versus Arizona, and then Friday, December 29th, ninth, we've got the Clemson versus Kentucky in the Gator Bowl. We got Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. That's Notre Dame versus Oregon State. Uh, the Liberty Bowl, Memphis versus Iowa State in Memphis, Tennessee. Cotton Bowl, number 7, Ohio State versus number 9, Missouri. And then Saturday, December 30th, we got the Peach Bowl. And that's Penn State versus Ole Miss. We've got Music City Bowl in Nashville. That's Auburn versus Maryland. The Orange Bowl, number 5, Florida State versus number 6, Georgia in Miami Gardens, Florida. Uh, Arizona Bowl is going to be Wyoming versus Toledo. Uh, the Rillawakwai Quest Bowl is LSU versus Wisconsin. The Citrus Bowl is Iowa versus Tennessee. Uh, Fiesta Bowl, Oregon versus the Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Uh, and then we've got, and that's Glendale, Arizona. College Playoff Semifinal. This is January 1st at the Rose Bowl. Number one, Michigan is going to roll over the roll tide of number four Alabama at the Pasadena, California. Uh, yeah, so the Rose Bowl is going to be awesome. And then the other college football playoff right after that is going to be Washington, number two, versus number three, Texas. And then January 8th, we all kick it off. It all comes to a head in Houston, Texas, when either Michigan or Alabama will play either Washington or Texas in the College Football National Championship game. And that's a 7.30 start on ESPN. So yeah, crazy. Can't wait. I'm excited. I'm excited that Michigan is number one ranked. Um, it's going to be fun watching them play against Alabama. I know a lot of Bama fans, including Justin Danger Nunley from uh, TikTok. He's a big fan of it. So I can't wait to see Michigan destroy them. It's going to be great. Uh, but yeah, so make sure you follow Justin Nunley on TikTok. I want to see him cry <laughs> when Alabama loses to my Wolverines. So we'll see what happens in that. I'm going to be talking some entertainment news in a one second. All right, so as everybody knows, Dancing with the Stars officially ended last night. Uh, the winner of that was Zochi Gomez. Uh, she won Dancing with the Stars uh, season 32 with her partner, Val Tremofsky. Uh The runner-up was Jason Mraz, who's one of my favorite singers of all time. Love Jason Mraz. And came in, coming in number five was one of my favorite actresses, Allison Hannigan, of course, um... 
everybody knows from the American Pie movies. Uh, but yeah. I was excited for that. I think everybody was excited for that one. Uh, it was a pretty decent show. I got to see the ending of it. Um, and also, okay, so The Golden Bachelor. For all of you people that have watched The Golden Bachelor this season, pretty decent show. Um, I like Gary. He was the first ever Golden Bachelor, and he was really cool. Uh, he was very... <laughs> he was very... Uh, he cried a lot. Okay, but I, I kind of get it. He was a widow. His wife passed away. Um, so he lost his wife. And then he goes on a show years later uh, where he has to meet all these women. And I think that a lot of people don't understand, though, with The Bachelor, is that these guys and girls, they start to like everybody. You know, you, you start hanging out with all these people, and then you have to start letting them go. And I think as you get towards the end where you're down to like five or six of them, you've pretty much got close to all six. Now you got to let one go a week or sometimes two. And it's got to be hard because all the people that you pick in those weeks, you're starting to dwindle down to the women who you really feel a connection with or the man that you feel a connection with. And so I think when you watch these shows and they do cry, I mean, we, we kind of laugh at it, you know, and make fun of them and stuff for it. But at the same time, it's got to be hard to, <laughs> like, get connections with these people and then all of a sudden, it's done. You know, and you got to let these people go, and you got to lose connections with people. And then you probably second guess yourself, like, well, would I have been happier with this person? Or would I have been happier with that person? You know, I think that's a rough one for everybody to be on that show. Uh, but Gary Turner ended up picking Teresa Nitzt, um, and that was who he proposed to. And she said yes. And in fact, on January, I believe it's January 8th, but I got to check that date. They are going to have the first ever Golden Bachelor wedding. They will get married on live TV. That is really cool. I'm excited for that. I think it's cool to see them because you invested your time in this, and now you get to see them get married. So I'm happy for them. I'm happy they found love in their 70s. That's cool. Um, both of them were widowed. And I think that at the end of that, that's why he picked the one he did. Um, because if you haven't seen it yet, you know, this is a spoiler, but... The one that he didn't pick was the one that I think a lot of people thought he would, and including myself. Um, she was in her 60s. She was a dancer. She was, you know, really cool, you know, and stuff. But she was never really committed. Like, she was committed, but the guys weren't committed to her. And the one that Gary picked actually was widowed. And his her husband died just like his, his wife died. So I, they had a connection because of that. And I think that's not why they ended up being together. So it was cool. I liked it. Uh, I can't wait to hear who the first Golden Bachelorette's going to be. Uh, eventually they will do, I think they will do that. Uh, there's one lady who had to leave the show. Um, and I think Gary would have probably picked her or she would have been in the top three. Um, he really started to like her and she really liked him, but at the end she had to leave because her daughter just had a baby and, uh, I guess there was some kind of something happened, an emergency, and she just had to go home to be with her daughter, which I understand that. I got daughters. I would leave for them too. Um, you know, it happens, but I think she will either be the Golden Bachelorette or the runner-up lady who got her heart broken will be the golden bachelorette but either way it'd be cool to see either one of them as the golden bachelorette i hope that they do it i'm excited there's a new season of the bachelor starting it's back to young people not a big fan of the young people one i think that they're a lot more heartless than uh ones who are like the golden bachelors because the golden bachelors are older and they have a heart <laughs> but i don't know i'd maybe give this guy a try he, he looked pretty cool so we'll see what happens there um, not really much else to talk about when it comes to celebrity news. Uh, one big thing I did want to bring up, though, is Norman Lear, the producer of The Jeffersons and All in the Family, passed away today at 101. So rest in peace, Norman Lear. He was a pioneer, Princess Bride, all that stuff. He brought that to us. He's amazing. Um, sad that he went, but he did live to 101. So rest in peace, Norman Lear. Uh, that's really sad. So, yeah, we'll see. But uh, I'll be right back. 
but yeah, that's that's really sad. Um, you know, and I was just thinking about two good times, all that stuff. So uh, let's see, any new major movies releasing this week? Uh, let's see, anything good? It's December sixth. I got to put in December sixth, and we'll see. Because I don't know. Like I said, I don't think anything that great's coming out this week. Oh, the new Aquaman comes out. <laughs> the new Aquaman too. Um, yeah, not. I'm not that excited for Aquaman, honestly. Um, Friday, December first. That was last week. The Boy and the Heron, don't know what that is. Wonka comes out next week. Oh, Aquaman comes out the 22nd. I was wrong. Uh, but the big one this week is The Boy and Heron. And I'm pretty sure it's anime. I'm not into that. So if you're into anime, you know, that's good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, check out the streaming services. There's a new movie with Eddie Murphy um, coming out on Prime Video. It's called Candy Cane Lane. Uh, looks pretty decent. So make sure you check that one out. Um, I believe it comes out this weekend. Um, I don't see a release date for it. So let me see. Oh, it already came out. It came out last week. So yeah, go check that out. That's a good movie. And go check out any holiday movies that are on Netflix, Hulu, Prime, um, what else? <laughs> um, Peacock. Any of those, HBO Max or Max, whatever they call it now. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to take off. Uh, it's been a good show. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Make sure you stay tuned next week. I'm going to have my results from week 14, and we'll preview week 15. Uh, we'll talk about any bowls that are coming up that weekend. Uh, we'll talk about wrestling news, celebrity news, celebrity gossip, TV shows come back in January, uh, so we'll have those to talk about soon. But uh, make sure that you follow me on all the socials. Uh, that's in the comments at the bottom. You'll see the uh, little box where I talk about the show. So make sure that you do that. And then, uh, yeah, so make sure that you follow me on those and email me, good, bad, ugly, whatever you want to say. Uh, make sure you do that. And I'll read emails on the show if you email me. I'll read your emails um, at the end of the shows every week. It'll be fun. Even if you make fun of me or you tell me the show's good and you like it. Uh, but yeah, also looking for sponsors. If you know somebody that owns a small business that uh, does business over the internet, let them know about my show. And I can sponsor them on here and uh, they could be heard worldwide. So uh, yeah, I'll see everybody next week. Big happy birthday shout out to my daughter who turns 13 this week. Can't believe that the years went by this quick, but she is going to be a teenager. Can't wait. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> I'll see everybody next week. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy and watch out for flus, COVIDs, and everything else, and don't die. We'll see everybody next week. Peace.